Hello, welcome to a new series of Mock the Week. I'm Jarrah Breen, and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Lucy Porter, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Our first round is called If This Is the Answer, What Is the Question? On the board are six categories. Lucy, would you like to pick a category for us? Uh, foreign news. Your category is foreign news. The answer is one million percent. What is the question? Is it, uh, what is the blood alcohol content of Amy Winehouse? <laughs> <laughs> is it, after a recent power surge, what did Stephen Hawking say over and over again <laughs> for three days? <laughs> is it, how much has petrol gone up since I started this sentence? <laughs> What increase in population will Kerry Katona be responsible for <laughs> by the time her womb finally succumbs to the ravages of time and chicken drumsticks? <laughs> I've missed you, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> is, it, is it? How much did exaggerations go up last year? <laughs> How out of proportion was the reaction to a Brit winning kids Wimbledon? <laughs> well, is it Wimbledon like, like kids like kids Scrabble? Like the, uh, <laughs> yes. Is it like is it played on a much smaller court or like those jigsaws that have four pieces? Well, uh, like, like, uh, yeah. Or when you go bowling and you get the thing. Oh, I got it! I got it! <laughs> it's a train. <laughs> How much does Max Mosley's blood pressure go up when he smells leather? <laughs> Is it how much happier would I be if I saw a duck moonwalking? <laughs> be up there. Can you imagine that? Can you like picture that image of quack, quack? No, no. In my head, it doesn't. He doesn't quack every time. He just does a number of them. Knows you're looking, and then turns and goes quack. <laughs> <laughs> what, what discount would DFS have to offer to get me in there on a bank holiday Monday? <laughs> Is it? How much too much are you paying for your car insurance? <laughs> does, any, does, well, does anyone know what the actual... What, what the is the real answer, what is the rate of inflation in Zimbabwe? Yes, it is, actually, yes. Quite very good, Lucy Porter, yeah. <laughs> yes, Lucy, the question I was looking for is, what is the estimated current inflation rate in Zimbabwe? This is the escalating economic disaster under Robert Mugabe's regime, with prices doubling every hour. Many Zimbabweans are now unable to afford even the most basic supply. You wouldn't spend too long browsing in a Zimbabwean shop, would you? <laughs> I, I, I would go so far as that you would be very careful what queue you joined yes. in the supermarket. Uh, you wouldn't want to get stuck behind an elderly woman. Uh, at the best of times, it's not great. Um, but in Zimbabwe at this time, it's like, that's $38 trillion. Let me see if I have the change. <laughs> <laughs> On the news, it was, it was footage of a supermarket in Zimbabwe, and there was a packet of chocolate eclairs for $125 million. <laughs> Although, admittedly, it was Zimbabwean waitros. <laughs> Do you know that they did a survey this week said that Zimbabwean people are the least contented people in the world? <laughs> They're just no pleasing some people. <laughs> they've had an election, they've had loads of money. What do you want, yeah. for God's sake? They've had an election yeah. that was so corrupt that second place actually went to Ant and Deck. <laughs> The weird thing, though, is in an election where there is only one candidate, he only got 85% of the vote. <laughs> he actually, he wasn't he a, no, no, he wasn't the only candidate. It was himself, it was David Icke, uh, Miss Whiplash, and the Scottish Nationals, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've dealt with it very well, don't you think? You know, I think, you know, because 90% of the, uh, the population of Zimbabwe is on food aid, torture, the life expectancy is 37, and what have we done? We've taken away his honorary degree. That's right. <laughs> We've messed up his CV. You do not mess with us. <laughs> you know? Next week, we're going to put a red sock in his whitewash. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Be fair, Russell. We're yeah. tightening the screw. We're not going to play cricket against them. That's right. <laughs> and Tesco aren't buying their figs. <laughs> he's he's going to come down pretty... He doesn't give a shit, does he? He's got a Hitler moustache. He has <laughs> Nobody who has a Hitler moustache gives a shit about anything. <laughs> what I want to look like... Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like his top lips are a Brazilian. It's more than a Hitler. <laughs> the economy was never going to work, though, was it? Because basically, what he did was he took the farms away from the rich people, didn't he? And gave them to the poor people and made the poor people 
even poorer. It's like Robin Hood, but with no grasp of economics whatsoever. <laughs> You know, taking farmers away from people who knew how to run them and giving them to people who haven't got a clue. Have you got any clue how to run the farm? I've got no clue whatsoever. All right, you shear the chickens, I'll milk the horses. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, to be fair, though, I mean, people give him a hard time, but he, he actually, you know, he ran a good campaign. He had a good slogan, vote for me and I won't kill you. <laughs> and uh, he, he was very good on Zimbabwe in question time. That's a good question. Have him taken away and killed. <laughs> I do genuinely, um, like Frankie says, as, as you know, in the international community, are just sort of making these symbolic gestures, uh, say the EU say they won't uh, recognise the legitimacy of his government, but that is irrelevant. He continues. It's a nonsense. It's, it's, there's no reality in that gesture. It's like taking away Joseph Fritzl's Dad of the Year mug. It's really... <laughs> it, it, it's completely meaningless. <laughs> And our big solution to this, as a government, as a nation, as a force, Gordon Brown meets with Cobra to decide, it's the big one, we need to remove cricket, we won't play you at cricket. Like, that, like this is going to, you know, tame criminals, like you're going to have people being sent down for murder and rape. Two years, no cricket, suspended, yeah. no scrabble, it's a complete nonsense. No French cricket, no cricket of any time. Like Mugabe's going to react to that. Like he's going to go, I will remove myself from government, I already have 2020 tickets, I cannot... Yeah. Gordon Brown, why you be so harsh with this nation? It's nonsense. That was an incredible impression. Yeah. I just want to say... Difficult. With that le level of impressionistic ability, <laughs> you are going to fit right in on this show. <laughs> Gordon Brown, why you take away my cricket? Okay, let me give a hint. He doesn't speak as if he's going to turn and play something on the steel drum for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it went dun, a bit west dun, 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 <laughs> Election <laughs> as king. Go <laughs> But do they tally up the votes? They are going to tally the banana. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really heard him speak. Have you heard him speak? Why, so you just made up whatever <laughs> accent you felt like? You know? Why didn't you give him like a Dutch accent? Give, him, give him a Dutch accent or something. Make that give him a like a dog. I'd alternatively like to do my impression of Morgan's finger eye. <laughs> did you see, though, that he'd apparently gone into hiding yeah. in the Dutch embassy? Now, if they know where he is, surely he hasn't gone into hiding. <laughs> You, admit, oh, you didn't go, oh, let's play hide-and-seek, you count to ten, and when you open your eyes, I'm in that tree over there. <laughs> let's be honest, of all the places you're going to hide, once the Colombian embassy are too paranoid to open the door, second place is obviously the Dutch embassy, who are always willing to let anybody in in case they have pizza. Just <laughs> Come on in, man, it's party time, what's going on out there? That's a Dutch accent. <laughs> Very good accent. I can't tell the difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. What have G8 leaders been debating in Japan this week? They've been debating biofuels, for one thing. Yes. Yeah. They've basically decided part of the food crisis to do with biofuels. Biofuels, it's not the greatest idea, is it? Trying to make petrol out of things like maize, given that a third of the world is malnourished. You know, people watching a car going past, oh, crikey, there goes my sodden lunch. <laughs> much these rich countries going on about food shortages, isn't it? I mean, we're going to be fine. How, how bad are things going to have to get before we can't afford to shop at Lidl? <laughs> I once did my entire weekly shop at Lidl in exchange for an amulet made from cat's teeth. <laughs> Is there telling us we shouldn't waste food? Surely he needs to talk yes. to John Prescott, a man who, from his own diaries, we know wastes an awful lot of food. Yeah, there's a, there's a difference between a, being a bulimic and just liking to eat so much that you puke. I think it's a good point you're making. If you, they say that we waste 400 pounds a year on food. It's not just the food that um, that you throw away. There's food that you um, have on your face. Um, and also asparagus, how low do you go? Some people just tip, whereas there's a lot of asparagus that you can still enjoy. Obviously you don't eat the whole asparagus, I'm, I'm not a monster, but you do. You, you yeah. can have, there's at least an inch more. My wife leaves a huge amount of asparagus. I think well, really, the food really, wastage. I think you should say that to the starving nations of the world. Yeah. You can tell them they're being too picky about how yes. much asparagus they eat. Yes. 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 Asparagus. That was the most middle-class limbo yeah. ever. Asparagus, how low do you go? <laughs> 
that's what we're all about, right? Because it's Gordon Brown saying, oh, we're wasting food. It's not like it's the biggest waste of money we have. We spend millions and billions of pounds building weapons to kill shepherds. <laughs> and you've got someone who spent £7 billion on two aircraft carriers this week standing in front of us going, maybe you should keep your potato peelings and make some kind of flan. <laughs> Do you, think, do you think when it really gets bad, this is going to be Marks and Spencer's potatoes? They're just fucking potatoes, all right? <laughs> just, this just, is I can see why you didn't get that voice over. <laughs> Marks and Spencer's potatoes. They're just fucking potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Confused though, because we're, we're, we're throwing away millions of tons of food, and yet 25% of the nation is obese, which implies that late at night, fat people are eating from bins. <laughs> now, let's be honest, that, that's a reality TV show we'd all watch just seeing really tubby people dressing up as foxes. <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give the point to Michael Hugh and Frankie. <laughs> now we play a round called Britain's Got Jokes. <laughs> this game involves Michael, Andy, Frankie, and Lucy. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. Mm -hmm. This is where we test our performance stand up. We spin our news generator, we pluck out a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the subject. The winner is the team with the best stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first topic is sport. Can somebody talk about that? Andy. <laughs> Not quite sure what sport that is supposed to represent. <laughs> They're saying, aren't they, you know, oh, basically, oh, we need to spend millions of pounds on this massive Olympic stadium. What are the sports we're world class at? Pool and darts. <laughs> we don't need a massive stadium. We need a gigantic weather spoons. <laughs> an Olympic quiz night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you may also have seen, right, Almunia, the Arsenal goalkeeper, he apparently has got ghosts in his Hertfordshire mansion, which he's shit scared of. <laughs> now, given that you're a goalkeeper, being frightened of white things that fly <laughs> through the air, <laughs> all you've got to do to frighten Almunia is just go up behind him during a corner and just go... <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is relationships. Who wants to come in on that? Lucy Porter. <laughs> I know. That's so sweet, see, because my problem is in relationships, I tend to go for bad boys. I always think, I always try and see the good in bad boys as well, bad men. Like, you know Osama bin Laden, right? People always go, oh, Osama bin Laden, terrorist, right? And there is that side to Osama, yes, right? <laughs> but there's other stuff about Osama that people don't talk about so much. It's like, you know, when Osama, he, he sends us little messages all the time, he keeps in touch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because in my experience, a lot of men don't do that. Um, and, um, <laughs> and I just think it's really lovely as well, because when he sends us messages, Osama often sends his messages on audio cassettes, and I think it's lovely the fact that Osama bin Laden is the only person in the world still using the audio cassette. It's just brilliant. It just makes you think, how come we haven't caught Osama? Just find out who's buying the C90s. You've got the bugger, haven't you? <laughs> OK, we're left with Michael and Frankie. Spin the wheel, please. The next topic is a war on terror. Who wants in? Frankie. <laughs> George Bush says that when he retires, he's going to make his living from speaking. Yeah, play to your strengths, eh, George? <laughs> That's like Abu Hamza having a career doing shadow puppets. <laughs> I watched the footage of Saddam being executed, and it really made me think. It made me think, is there nothing on the internet that I won't masturbate to? <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they, put his, they put his death on YouTube. I mean, it's really got to bring it home to you as a great dictator when your death gets less hits than a fat Korean boy body popping. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frankie. OK, Michael, let's see what you've been left right. with. Let's spin the wheel. And it's telecommunications. From the past. <laughs> um, now, 
Um, what did I say? Well, yes, phone calls, of course, you phone people who you know. This is the idea. You phone people because you need to phone them. But sometimes you speak to people you don't know, and you will have the wrong number conversation, something we all enjoy maybe two or three times a year. One of you thinks it's the right number. So you're phoning somebody <laughs> who you think you know, because you don't dial numbers at random. This isn't how the system works. You don't just pick up the phone <laughs> and dial the digits and go, oh, I hope it's Dave. That's not how it works, OK? It isn't Dave. I'll try again! That's not how it works. <laughs> what happens is that you dial the number. Uh, say, for example, you're calling Sue. You might have spoken to Sue earlier in the day. It might be one of those, I'll call you right back, Sue. And then the number rings, it gets picked up, hello! <laughs> but you still go, Sue? <laughs> even, though, even though you're 99.9% .9 sure that can't be Sue, you think, Sue's the only name I have. I'm going to run with Sue on this. <laughs> on the off chance they go, it is Sue. Something terrible has happened to me <laughs> since you called me. Thank God you found! <laughs> <laughs> well done, Michael. And the points there go to Michael and Frankie. The next round is called Headliners in the week of the Church of England Synod. What does CDWB stand for? Is it Christ disowns weird bastards? <laughs> is it? Look at them, man. They look like the world's first gay superhero team. <laughs> Welcome to Fabulous Justice. <laughs> <laughs> is it Church Deploy's worst boy band? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Chakademus Wow's Bishops? <laughs> Chakademus is just that I shot going, tease me, tease me, tease me. <laughs> I always thought that was Pliers who did tease me, tease me, tease me. Pliers, yes, you may be yes, right. Well done for knowing that. I've got a lovely image of you grinding in the 90s. I used, to grind, I used to grind in the 90s. Hey. I may still grind for all you know. <laughs> Is it crikey? Denzel Washington Bishop? <laughs> Is Why not? Why? Because all... Sorry. So now all black people look oh, alike. Don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't do that. Do you know... It's I'm... a very difficult round. <laughs> if yeah, you're a yeah. racist. <laughs> <laughs> How can I fit my racist ideology into four letters? Uh, Is it shirts don't want birds? <laughs> Is it Christian disco went badly? <laughs> It is to do with the women thing, and I think it's the Daily Mail headline, which is, Christ didn't wear bras. <laughs> oh, look, you actually, you're not far off. What could be the Is it a new answer. song? <laughs> Come da we below. Come da we. Come da we. Oh, no. I'll be honest. <laughs> what was that? Andy sounded like he was deaf. What was that? <laughs> is it church dating website backfires? <laughs> All right, it, church is, is the first word. Church, church yeah. decision, women bishops. <laughs> church uh, do women bishops. <laughs> church the, the deny D. wearing bedspreads. <laughs> the D stands for. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, like, everyone got closer and closer and closer, and then suddenly they're denying wearing bedspreads. <laughs> suddenly you veered <laughs> off towards bedspreads. <laughs> No, the actual answer is church decrees women bishops. Ah. Refers to this week's historic meeting of the General Synod in York, where the Church of England examined the possibility of consecrating female bishops. More than 1,300 clergy have threatened to leave the church over the issue. What, wasn't General Synod the villain in Superman 2? Knew <laughs> <laughs> before Synod. <laughs> I'm all for women bishops because finally you'll have bishops that teenage boys can have sex with willingly. <laughs> See, yeah. I, found this out, I found this out this week. Uh, it's only 1.2 million people that go to church every Sunday, which means that more people watch this show than go to church. So in many ways, it's Dara's decision. <laughs> OK, I'd love to make the decision on this, right? Because I'm strongly of the belief that, frankly, I'd love to see them crawling back to the Catholic Church out of the Catholic Church going, well, well, well. <laughs> uh, well, well, well. And I'm, I'm an atheist and I'd love that, but I'm a Catholic atheist. Uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, okay. is, uh, he, he was asked about this issue and he was asked, uh, what would Jesus say? Yeah, they keep doing Which is that, a big yeah. question. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, he said, well, Jesus uh, would be on both sides. And he just answered straight off what Jesus said. And it, isn't it fantastic to have the ability to play, as the Archbishop of Canterbury has, the Jesus card at any moment? So he's out with his family, they're in Block 
blockbuster. They're arguing what DVD to get. Everyone's like, oh, I want to get the new George Clooney. It's got great reviews. Oh, I don't fancy George Clooney. Oh, but it's a great film. We want to see it. I have spoken to Jesus about this issue. <laughs> We were watching the whole nine yards with Bruce Willis. It's just lovely. <laughs> Do you reckon he ever does that? Do you reckon he's ever kind of go, hang on a minute? Really? Fair enough. Sorry, <laughs> children, you've got to go to bed. <laughs> the scripture is definitely weird. Do you know this thing that says a man who lies with another man should be stoned? It definitely helps, in my experience. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to make fuss about nothing, doesn't it? Yeah. Because surely the head of the Church of England is the Queen. And last time I looked, I thought she was a woman. <laughs> Maybe that's why Prince Philip. That's <laughs> why Prince Philip looks so grumpy. He's just suddenly found out. Okay, let's let's go on to the story which has united the church. Why is this man being causing controversy this week? Well, he had to baby that man. You can see quite clearly that he's slightly pregnant. He became more pregnant, and then ultimately he had a baby. And <laughs> normally, when you say "is it a boy or a girl," it refers to the baby and not the mother. Um, <laughs> Yes, this is the story of Thomas Beattie, known as the pregnant man. He gave birth to a girl last week in Oregon. Thomas has born Tracy and underwent a gender reassignment operation and is now legally male. Good news, you've had a healthy baby. Bad news, you've blown your cock off. <laughs> that's actually, uh, that's actually good That's news. the main reason why Frank, you'll never be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work on that, on that bedside manner. That really has to be. Doctors rarely come in and go, good news, <laughs> bad news. It's going to be really tricky to raise a kid, I think, because like the kid will be like, I want chocolate ice cream and strawberry ice cream. Well, you can't have both. Really, mummy? <laughs> <laughs> but gender reassignment, is that right? Yeah. That's what it's called, gender it reassignment. It sounds like witness relocation for your genitals, doesn't it? It, sounds like... it, it would be a very severe form of witness yeah. relocation. Uh... It just sounds like you're being reassigned. It doesn't sound like you've made a choice. It sounds like it comes through the post and go, oh dear, I thought it was a BT bill. Yeah. I'm going to be a woman from next Tuesday. <laughs> Apparently, there's been a mix-up in the National Audit <laughs> Office. Uh, I've and... been reassigned <laughs> agenda. <laughs> Sorry about that, darling. <laughs> I bet you any money, anyone who went up to them didn't chat about the bump, you'd find any other topic. You get so embarrassed. So, do you like Twixes? Yeah. <laughs> I saw a woman breastfeeding on the tube. It's and, awkward, isn't um, it? What'd you do? No, but it was beyond awkward. Go because on. How she... is it awkward? I'll, I'll explain to you, Dara, if you'd let me finish. <laughs> And I think I can prove to you with this next sentence why it was awkward, all right? <laughs> she was you breastfeeding the child, right? Yes. With her breast. The child was sucking, very right? Good doing, on yeah. the tube. That is not awkward. What was awkward, Dara, is that she also had her other breast out. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know, but I feel that you breast one at a time. You don't leave the other one just <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> Maybe she had twins and she didn't realise she'd lost one of them. <laughs> I mean, one, one of the twins may still be on the Jubilee line, uh, and she uh, she changed to Green Park. Uh, and went, oh, hello. Come on, one for the baby, one for the carriage, ladies. It's what I've been carriage lady. to do for years. I guess because you breastfeed, and then if you have to change breasts, you, I think you put the breast oh, back in, yes, doesn't it? Yeah, but yeah, to yeah. leave the breast hanging and just to be sitting there. I mean, at least she had a child. I mean, she could have just been sitting there with her tits hanging out. At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give the point to Russell, Lucy and Andy! <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I'll call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, you know this, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is bad things for a by-election candidate to say. I would like to kiss your baby, but we don't want to go down that road again. <laughs> I am the perfect candidate. This is an election, and I am bi. <laughs> Vote for me, Doris McGarvey. I'd like to say no relation, but... <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Power gives me wood. <laughs> I've been knocking on doors in this constituency for weeks, and it's completely unconnected to the recent stranglings. <laughs> knife crime must end. Just last week, I was given a steak knife when I clearly ordered the fish. <laughs> if elected, living standards will go up. For me and my wife. 
I would say the fact that the Labour Party haven't put forward a candidate has not devalued this election at all. Ask my fellow opponents, Timmy Mallet, Elvis and the Honey Monster. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to bring crime in this constituency down by patrolling the streets at night dressed as a man leopard. <laughs> I have impeccable green credentials because I've never used deodorant or had a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about politics, but I can crush a right pair between my buttocks. <laughs> Okay, the next topic is unnerving things to hear during a medical examination. Yes, uh, I'll be operating. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Come here, you've got to look at this! <laughs> <laughs> That's your smear test done, and I do have some bad news. I'm the janitor. Yes, well, it's definitely stuck up there. <laughs> we, may, uh, we may have to use the ferret. <laughs> uh, so if you'd like to just pop your clothes over there, next to mine. <laughs> You'll live for about a week. <laughs> Well, there's good news and bad news, but don't worry, I can give the good news to your widow. <laughs> don't worry, panic over, it was just a spider on the microscope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how does it feel if I touch you here? And here? And there? <laughs> work, but every time I prescribe them, I get a free pen. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't have your old hip back, Mrs. Smith. I fed it to my dog. <laughs> this is one of the healthiest x-rays I've ever seen. But if we compare that with yours... <laughs> Right, um, I thought for a change, um, I could cough and you could hold my balls. You have the body of someone half your age growing inside your womb. <laughs> well, there's good news, you've had a baby. And the bad news, it's blown your cock off. <laughs> OK, let's leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give the point to Frankie Ewan Michael. <laughs> and that is the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Camille Reporter and Russell Howard. Thank you for watching. My name's Jared Breen. Good night. Stay with us for even more new stuff next. It's BBC Two's brand new sitcom starring in the thick of it's Chris Addison. Lab Raps in a moment.